Yahoo, by Shimmy Hao Shai, Boha Kadash Waka, Wakatam. Double honors to the elders and apostles of GMS who rule and teach well. Shalom to the hopeful elect Akim out there. Alright. It's a little brother Shema Shawan. With a quick video, we're gonna have an in-depth lesson on Daniel chapter 7, mostly focusing on uh the Assyrians. All right. Not really an in-depth lesson on Daniel chapter 7, but just an in-depth le lesson on the Assyrians. Alright, and before I begin, you know, for the newcomers out here, man, when we get into get into history, that's something you need to know. That's very important. This is the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done be through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Alright? Esteem me looking highly upon others high, higher than yourself. Okay, let 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 you look upon others higher than yourself to stay that lowliness of mind to be humble okay don't do anything in strife or vain glory what is vanity vanity is pointlessness okay so when we bring out this truth when we bring out this history we're not doing it to sound vain or i'm so smart i'm so this i'm so that no man we're doing this to edify the hopeful elect all right to feed the sheep okay let not every man look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others Exactly, you know, don't be so focused on yourself. And nah, I gotta be, you know, what I'm saying, and, and uh, uh, you know, you know, what I'm trying to say, looking at yourself like I'm so great. But back to verse three, you know, esteem others, look at others as better than yourself. Okay, don't look at yourself saying I'm so great and elevate yourself. You know, you should be elevating others higher than yourself. All right, then you chapter seven, and the first year, Belshazzar. King of Babylon. Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and he told the sum of the matters. And the first year of Belshazzar. All right, and we're going to go uh, pull something out on Belshazzar just real quick. Okay. Real quick. This is uh, Harper's Bible Dictionary. Okay, we're going to go down to page 212. All right, uh, so this is Harper's Bible Dictionary, uh, verse 212. All right, this is Neo Babylonian Empire 606 to 536 BC. And we're going to go straight to the point. Okay, Nabonidus. 555 to 536 BC, his son Belshazzar, co-regent, the last few years of his reign, Babylon fell. Supremacy passed to Persia. All right. Yeah, and that's what I'm going to leave it on. So Belshazzar was uh, co-regent to his father, Nabonidus, which was the real, you know, last king of, of uh, Babylon. But Belshazzar was his co-regent, so he did also uh, rule Babylon. Okay. So this guy Bush is our last king of Babylon. Daniel had a dream and visions on his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Okay. This is the book of uh, Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. Surely, Yahweh will do nothing, but he revealeth the secret unto his servants, the prophets. Okay. Daniel was one of the servants of the Lord. Okay. And the Most High gave him dreams and visions. Okay. To prophesy things that are going to come okay now when you go look into that word prophesy just real quick uh pro coming for before or forward okay before forward hence in front of before okay so like uh protrude like something is protruding out of you all right in front of you yeah hold on something's printing let me cancel that uh fanai to speak so that's the same word to like prophecy, fanai. Okay, so when you put it all together, okay, fanai is a Greek word, by the way. Prophet means to speak before, okay? These prophets are speaking before of things, before time of things that are going to come, okay? And Daniel, we're going to explain it as we go on. Daniel is speaking of things that already happened and then things that didn't happen yet in his time but happened later in history, Okay. So this is uh, Numbers chapter 12, verse 6. 
And he said, Hear now my words, that there be a prophet among you once again speak before. I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. Okay? Speak unto him in a dream. All right, what did Daniel have? Daniel had a dream. This is how the Most High speaks to his servants, the prophets, through dreams and visions. Okay? And just to show you how much uh, how important these prophecies are, this is uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18. When there is no vision, the people perish, and he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Uh, when there is no vision, when there is no visions for the prophets of what we need to do next, of what is going to happen next, of what the future is going to be, the people will die because the people are going to be scrambling and, you know, not really knowing what to do. Okay? But uh, there's more I could go into that, but I want to... Uh, move on here. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his, upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and, and said, In my dream, okay, Daniel spake and said, I saw my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strolled upon the great sea. Okay, so let's start off first, uh, starting chronological order, the four winds of heaven. Okay, those four winds are talking about four kings. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 1, verse 18. And then lifted up, then lifted I up mine eyes, and saw, behold, four horns, four kings. Okay, verse 19. And I said unto the angel, talk me, what be these? And he said, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Yasharala, and Jerusalem. All right, Judah, Israel, and uh Jerusalem. Jerusalem is also Yasharal, Yasharalim. I think that's how you say it. Um, Salakia. But it's Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Okay? Those are the four kings. And these four winds, four kings did 100% scatter our people. Okay? This great sea here. Okay? We're going to prove that too. That great sea is the Mediterranean, okay, Salakia. Mediterranean Sea is a sea connected to the Atlantic Ocean surrounded by the Mediterranean Basin and almost entire and almost completely enclosed by land on the northwest and southern Europe and Anatolia on the south by North Africa, okay, so north by western and southern Europe and Anatolia and on the south you got North Africa and on the east by the Levant. The Levant is a historical term referring to referring to a large area in the eastern Mediterranean region or Western Asia in narrow sense. Uh, historical region of Syria, which includes present day Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Israel, and Turkey. You know? That's what they call the Levant. Alright, so you got us around this area. And then you also got uh I believe they said Southeast Turkey. Let's see that again. Let's actually uh, look over here. Uh, yeah, which included present-day Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Israel, Palestine, and most of Turkey, southeast of the Middle Euphrates. In the widest sense, Levant include all the eastern Mediterranean with its islands. That is included all the countries along the eastern Mediterranean shores, extending from Greece to Cyrenicia and uh, eastern Libya. Okay, which uh, let's get some pictures just to show you, right? You got Turkey over here, okay? Turkey, then you got Syria, you got us here, you got North Africa, Libya, Algeria, etc. And uh, we're gonna go prove it that that is the Great Sea. We're gonna go straight to the point. This is pretty much the borders of uh. Israel being set up and he's given to Moses. I'm just going to go straight to the point, verse 6. Numbers chapter 34, verse 6, as for the western border, you shall even have the great sea for a border. There shall be a west border. Okay? The great sea, west border. Okay? Just just proof, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. Okay? So, what did we just go over? Four winds, uh, four kings, okay? And they strove upon the great sea. We go into it, those four kings, okay, they fought over this entire area. They were they are all located in this area, okay? This whole area. 
All right, now let's go on to verse three. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Okay, and uh, we're focusing on the first beast, right? But I'm gonna let you know the four beasts real quick. You know, we don't want to go into the entire chapter. Assyrian Babylonians is the first. Persian Median is the second. Greece is the third. Rome is the fourth. And all these beasts are diverse one from another. There were Bab Assyria Babylon, Assyria Babylon. You had co-regents. You know, you had uh, basically not exactly city-states. You kind of had sort of pseudo-city-states at the beginning. But uh, over time, you had kings, lineages. You know, I mean, sometimes kings had co-regents and advisors. All right. You know, ziggurats with the Syrian Babylonians. Persia kind of uh, continued that trend. They also had co-regents and, uh, you know, kings and... I believe Persia also has satraps, satrapies, and various governors here and there. Okay. Then Greece took down Persia. In Greece, you know, you had city states, you had various kings of those city states, the king of Sparta, Leonidas, okay, king of Athens, right? And they, they kind of started off first as city states, and they used to have a little bit of infighting here and there. Okay. Then you also uh had later on uh with Alexander the Creep. You had, you know, one big king, and then after he died, he split it up into his four generals. And then you had all these different empires here and there and had kings of various empires scattered across, uh, you know, this entire area. Okay, which is a topic for another lesson. And you had Rome, which Rome, you know, had the Senate. Uh, Rome went all in with the governors. You know, you had uh, a Caesar, but you kind of had kind of governors that were under the Caesar having Senate houses. You know, that's what made Rome different. All the beasts, all these beasts are all diverse one from another. Okay. Yeah, let's get uh, rid of some of these, get rid of some of the clutter here. Yeah. Um, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Okay. Next, I'm going to read the full thing. The first was like a lion, had eagle's wings, upheld to the wings of were plucked and lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart uh, was given unto it. All right, so um, this is kind of a heavy one. Uh, a lot of stuff to go into. This is um, talking about the Syrian Babylonians. All right, so first and foremost, this is talking about the Lamasu. Uh, it's kind of griffin-like creature. Which is supposed to be, uh, you know, which is the the um, logo or the the main symbol of the Syrian Babylonian uh, Empire. Okay, the Syrian Lamassu. Okay, that's what it represents. Okay. Also, on a deeper level, okay, the lion is Babylon. Okay. And the eagle's wings is Assyria. The, the eagle's wings proceeded out of the lion. The eagle's wings, uh, pretty much the, the eagle's wings, Assyria at one point actually ruled over Babylon. Okay, and we're going to go bring that out. All right, let's get the page. This is Halley's Bible Handbook, page, let's go get it, page 209. All right, Halley's Bible Handbook. Page 209, all right, under Assyria. Okay, Assyria was founded previous to 2000 BC by colonists from Babylon and for many centuries was subject to or in conflict with Babylon. About 1300 BC, Shalmaneser I threw off the yoke of Babylon and ruled the whole Euphrates, Euphrates Valley. Then Assyria declined. Tiglath Pileser I, from 1120 BC to 1100 BC, made Assyria again a great kingdom. Then another period of decline. Then followed the brilliant epoch of 300 years in which Assyria was a world empire under the following kings. Which we don't gotta, you know, exactly read into it. We're gonna go back to that actually a little bit. Let me actually. Put this pencil here just to hold that down. Okay. We're actually going to... Oh, shit. Oops. Uh, we're going to look up Assyria. 
Empire on Wiki, Wikipedia. Okay, so we just read here the old Assyrian Empire, which is about the time it was set up. Okay, and uh, now now that uh, yeah, before I forget, Ashur. Okay, you know which, as I said here, you know. Before we go into this, Shalakia, but before we go into this, we're going to go into here first. Because we just read, right, that uh, Assyria was started by uh, previous to 2000 BC, was formed by colonists from Babylon. Okay? This is the man who formed Assyria. This is the man is attributed to. Ashur, second son of Shem. He went from the land of Shinar and built Nineveh, etc. Gen Genesis chapter 10. Verse 11 and 12, he probably gave his name to Assyria, which is the usual translation of the word, although the form Assyria, a short, is sometimes retained. Numbers 24, 22, etc., etc. In Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, verse 14, Assyria ought to be a short, which was the original capital of Assyria, a city represented by the mounds of Kalash Shergat on the west bank of the Tigris. The city was founded by Bel Kap Kapu. About B.C. 700, at a later date, the capital was shifted to Nineveh, Nino, or Nineveh, now Koyunijik, on the west bank of the river. Okay. So once again, Ashur, Assyria was started by the second son of Shem, you know, who built Nineveh on a later date. You know, but the original capital was just called after himself. Okay, and this is approximately, approximately, uh, 1700. Okay, but back to the point. All right, as we said before, uh, Syria was just a um, was formed by colony uh, colonists from Babylon about 1300 BC. Okay, around this time period, the Middle Empire. Okay, Shalmaneser the first broke away from Babylon. Okay, then after a series of infighting, they kind of fell back down. Okay, and then they rose back up again in the Neo Assyrian Empire from 911 to 605 BC. Okay, and as the book said, uh, then Assyria declined. Tiglath Pileser, uh, 1120 to 1110 BC, made Assyria again a great kingdom. Then another period of decline. Then followed the brilliant epoch of 300 years in which Assyria was a world empire under the following kings. Okay, we don't really got to read through those following kings. Uh, we're going to go talk about one of them. Okay, and before we move on, uh, furthermore about Assyria, we're going to go into this end a little bit in the next verse, right? Lions had eagle's wings. Okay, we're going to go into uh, ju just a little piece of info about uh, the way these guys thought okay a little bit more on the Assyrians and the, the belief systems all right we brought you the origin once again Assyria was formed by colonists from Babylon okay and then after a series of infighting with Babylon okay they eventually took Babylon down okay and had the Nero Assyrian Empire which owned Babylon they took it over okay Yeah, okay. Uh, this is from the Brooklyn Museum. Okay, and I uh, this is from the exhibit Assyrian Art and uh, Assyrian Palace Reliefs. Assyrian palaces were decorated to overwhelm the ancient visitor with the king's power and to reveal the supernatural world where the king existed. The reliefs in, the, in this gallery were decorated by the... With, <clears throat> the reliefs in this gallery decorated the vast palace of Assyria Nasir Paul II, 883 to 859 BC, one of the greatest rulers of ancient Assyria. Okay, we're going to read this again from uh, Halley's Bible Handbook, verse two on uh, page 209, Assyria. Then, okay, we're going to start here. Tiglath Pileser I made Assyria again a great kingdom. Let me put that down. Then another period of decline. Then followed the great epoch of 300 years in which Assyria was a world empire under the following kings. Okay? And you read about the first one. Ashur Nazipal II. 
885 to 860 BC, warlike and cruel, welded Assyria into the best fighting machine of the ancient world. This is talking about the same guy. Okay? This is the same exact guy. Now, the time date is a little bit off, you know, but this book is from, uh, what? Uh, the 19... 1920s, I believe. Yeah. 1920s. Really old book. Okay? Let's go again. Assyrian palaces were decorated to overwhelm the ancient visitor with the king's power and to reveal the supernatural world where the king existed. The release of this gather in this gallery decorated the vast palace, the vast palace of Ashur Nazir, Nazir Paul II, 883 to 859 BCE, one of the greatest rule of ancient Assyria, Neo Assyria. Okay, and this guy is pretty much like the the first king, one of the first kings of the Neo Assyrian Empire. Completed in 879 BC at Kahu, modern Nimrod, Nimrud. Slightly north of Baghdad, Iraq, they were carved with majestic images of kings, divinities, sacred trees, magical beings called Abkalu, and inscriptions. Abkalu had human bodies with wings and either human, eagle, or fish heads. The Assyrian believed that Abkalu survived a mythical flood to serve the king. Okay, now mythical flood is the exact same flood talked about in Genesis, I believe chapter... Uh, yeah, Genesis chapter, chapter, yeah, Genesis chapter 7, okay, it's the same exact flood, it's just further proof that it actually happened, okay, King Ashur Nazir Paul II celebrated the completion of his palace at Kalhu with a, with a, with a gala, with a gala banquet, which the gala believes like a party. The festivities lasted 10 days and drew, according to another text, the banquet stele, 69,574 guests who wandered through the palace in its more than two acres of grounds. Guests marveled at the walls decorated massive, massive alabaster slabs, including the 12 displayed here. The glory, however, was short-lived. Within a few generations, the palace had been abandoned and eventually, it was forgotten. Okay, and that's all I want to bring out. And I'm um, gonna have some pictures show uh, some of some of these things. All right, some of these uh, various uh, stales. Okay, moving on. Uh, I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the feet as a man. Slot you. Daniel chapter 7 verse 4. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked and was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given unto him. Okay. So the wings thereof were plucked. As I, as I said before, right? The wings is talking about Assyria. Okay. Which protruded out of the lion. Okay. Let's see here if I can find it. Uh, Lamasu. And actually, this time we'll get it from the gate of Hollywood, proving that these guys are a bunch of damn devils and thieves, all right? Okay, let's see here. Gate of Hollywood. I already showed you it before, but uh, it's on one of these places. Yeah, that's not it. But when I just uh, brought up the Abkalu, you know, this is how, you know, we could tie it back. You know, this place is, is Babylon the Great. You know, they, they took it. They lifted it. All right. This place is also modern day Assyria. Okay. They, they lifted all this stuff from Assyrian um, Assyrian ways. But back to the point, Lamasu. I can't find it. It's a, it, I thought it would be like the actual Lamasu. Maybe I saw the wrong thing. Uh, but yeah, here, the Lamasu. So the wings... Is Assyria okay? So the wings were plucked off. What does that mean? The Babylonians took down the Assyrians again, okay? Okay, the Neo Babylonian Empire. Uh, the Neo Babylonian Empire. Uh, let's see here. 
beginning with Nabopolassar's coronation as king of Babylon in 626 BC and being firmly established through the fall of the Neo-Syrian Empire in 612 BC, the, the Neo-Babylonian Empire and its ruling Chaldean dynasty which would be short-lived and would be conquered in less than a century by the Persian Achaemenid Ake Empire in 539 BC. Okay? Which, uh, you know, this is actually going back again, Belshazzar. That was the last king of Babylon. Okay, so the wings of was plucked. So the Neo-Assyrians was taken down and then began the Neo-Babylonians with Nabopolassar in 626 BC. Okay? It was lifted up from the earth and made it to stand upon the feet as a man and man saw was given unto it. Meaning that Babylon got lifted up. They got pride. They got prideful. Uh, proud. Prideful. Okay, they um uh, and that, that that made to be standing upon the feet as a man is actually also talking about uh, Nebuchadnezzar. So you know Nebuchadnezzar is attributed to be one of uh well to be Babylon's greatest ruler. Okay, uh let's see here we can go. We're gonna pull up something real quick on Nebuchadnezzar. Let's see here two eleven. We'll see two pages, and we'll go do this real quick. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to get too deep, so we'll go straight to the point. Thus, Nebuchadnezzar was twenty years in destroying Jerusalem. So Nebuchadnezzar was a uh, you know, one of our enemies. You know, he uh, took down Jerusalem. He took down Judah. He put Judah in captivity in uh, 606 B.C., approximately. Uh, thus, Nebuchadnezzar was 20 years in destroying Jerusalem. He would have done that first if he had wished to, but he only wanted tribute. Then to Daniel, when he took Babylon, when he took the Babylon at the beginning of the 20 years, soon became uh, Nebuchadnezzar's friend and advisor and may have had a hand of restraining influence on him to Judah's persistence in making alliance with Egypt, forced Nebuchadnezzar to wipe Jerusalem off the map. Okay, and yeah, we're just going to leave it at that. You know, this is Nebuchadnezzar, one of the greatest kings of uh, Babylon, okay, who, who did put Judah into captivity. All right, this is all I want to bring out. This is just it for the first part. All right, call Holalim Yahweh, by Shimi Hawashai, Wahal Kadash, Wakal, All right, that's all I got. I don't want to zah. I'll go more into the next part, make a bit more sense about Nebuchadnezzar, uh, about why he took down Judah, okay, and what happened to the Northern Kingdom. Once again, that's going to be in the next part. It's all gonna, it's all gonna make sense. All right, that's all I got. Show them all.